This is the Olympus LeatherTech One. The eagle-eyed among you may have realized that it is in fact an Olympus Mu One dressed in leather. Thumbnail makes sense now. And it was in fact the leather which attracted me to this classy little nugget. I've had my eye on this camera for quite a while. And then while I was at Safelight Lab in Berlin, they had one for sale and uh, they threw in a roll of 500T and little strap. So I thought, why not? Also, my Yashka T3 was unfortunately bugging out on me a little bit. So I was looking for a new point and shoot camera. The Olympus LT1 was released in 1994 initially and then updated in 1996 to this version, which has the quartz date function and also panoramic mode. But like a lot of 35 millimeter cameras at the time, the panoramic mode is actually just a 35 millimeter frame, which has been cropped at the top and bottom to a panoramic aspect ratio. It is no different from cropping in post. You don't get any extra size to your shot. It's just a gimmick. Um, don't use that ever. Although in this day and age, that seems like a complete waste of information. Back in the day, some labs would have been able to do you panoramic prints. So if you had the shot already in panorama in your mind, then getting it printed in panorama makes sense. But now with everything being digitized, just shoot the whole thing and crop it later how you want. As you'd expect from an Olympus point and shoot, it's fully automatic with shutter speeds ranging from 1 15th all the way up to 1 500th of a second and supports DX codes of 50 all the way up to 3200, defaulting to 100 if it can't read the DX code. It also has a self timer and a number of flash modes. Auto, which will not only detect if it's too dark, but also if your subject is backlit, it'll automatically fill in with a flash. Auto S is the same, but with red eye reduction, off, obviously off, and then fill in, as they call it, is just always on mode. Onto the lens, we've got a lovely little Olympus 35mm 3.5. And in the place of the sliding lens cap you might be used to on point and shoots, you've got this leather strap here. For composing, you've got a lovely bright viewfinder with panoramic frame lines in there. And as the minimum focus distance is 35 centimeters, there's also a parallax correction frame line because if you're getting real close to your subject, they're not actually going to be where they look through the viewfinder. Cool stuff. But one of my favorite things is the half press exposure and focus lock, something which is missing from many point and shoot cameras. When everything is fully automatic, it's very easy to accidentally underexpose your shot if there's a lot of sky or a lot of bright lights in the photo. There's also the ever present problem of only being able to focus on the thing directly in the center of your frame. However, with the half press, you can set the exposure in the shadows and then move over, recompose your shot and take the image with a much better exposure throughout as you can normally bring back highlight detail, whereas shadows are just bleh. For example, on this left image, I shot as is pointing straight down the middle of the composition and the sky is heavily influencing the exposure. For the second one, I half pressed on the building and then recomposed to how I wanted it before completing the shutter. And you can see significantly more shadow detail and still very nice highlights. It also sets focus. So if you've got your subject on thirds, for example, you can do half press focus, move, click, finish a shot, focus on what you want, not what the camera thinks you want. Now, before we get into the next section, let's have a quick montage of photos I've taken with this camera. Enjoy.
Welcome back. And the next question is, are there any downsides to this little beauty? And the answer is, yes, obviously. First is the on-off switch. Yes, it has an on-off switch. Unlike a lot of point and shoots where you just slide it open and it's ready to go, you have to remember to turn this one on, otherwise too late, you've missed your moment. However, that said, it does have a standby mode. So if you turn it on in the morning and then it turns off during the day, just a half press on the shutter and it'll turn back on or a full press on the shutter and it'll just take a picture immediately. There is of course the ever-present issue of shooting anything other than an SLR and that is the finger in front of the lens. And this camera adds also the floppy boy in front of the lens. If you're shooting over a bridge or something, you've got to make sure you don't get the little floppy lad in your composition. Now I got used to opening it up and folding it in the back here. That was my go-to. As for the finger in front of the lens, just uh, got to get used to that. The 40th shot. I have the 40th shot written in my notes here. Right, point and shoot cameras um, often get extra shots because of the way they're loaded. So a 36 shot roll, you'll often get 39 shots off of it, which is a great bonus of the point and shoot camera. But the roll of 500T, which Safelight gave to me, and this can be an issue with any hand rolled, re rolled film, uh, issue is not the right word, is there was an extra shot on the roll. But this LCD screen up here can only make the number 39. So when I got to 39, I took a photo, it wound on and it still said 39. And I thought it was broken, but then I took another photo and then it rewound back to the beginning. After checking the manual of the Mu, I found out that the LCD doesn't have the capability to write 40. So if you go past 39, don't be scared. Maybe you've just got an extra shot on your roll. Apart from those minor issues, it's a great little camera, very stylish, very small, very easy to use. And fun fact, while a lot of the Olympus Mews were made in various countries around the world, all LT1s were made in Japan. So that's cool, I guess. And that's it. I'll leave you with a few more photos and a thank you for watching. Leave comment and ting. See you next time.